Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the first uh, symposium for our GSL 20 this year. And we're pleased to start out with some, some effort on diorama building from Mr. Miguel Barbosa. He has journeyed here all the way from Puerto Rico. I don't know if my accent's any good or not, I'm faking it. But uh, he's uh, quite renowned in this field. He's studied uh, architecture and drafting, has taught seminars, has taught classes at university level, and he's won major awards from 1993 until 2003 here in uh, Tennessee, Atlanta, Puerto Rico, and uh, somewhere else here. I think he's due for one something at GSL. Maybe sometime he'll bless us with something he'll bring with, with him. So I'll uh, turn the mic to Miguel Barbosa. Thank you. Good morning to all. I'm happy to be here. Okay. Um, to speak about diorama, so it, it would take a long time, but there are special uh, um, aspects of diorama construction that, that you have to have in mind. The best thing, that, the first thing we have to know is the definitions of a diorama. A diorama is an object built in scale, and it's intended to be built only from one side. So the diorama is intended to be viewed from side, from the fi sideways, front or the back part of the diorama. So you don't always have to make the whole building or the whole structure. The diorama could be only be part of the, of the important thing that you want the person to see. So that means that you have to make a sketch, think what you're going to do, have an idea, make a sketch. Something that I always do is that I make a first model made out of foam board. No special details. I put any car, any kind of figure, and I go around the model to see which, of the, which side of the model I want to be viewed by the person that's going to see it, okay? So that, that's why some dioramas don't have important parts in the back side. And judging a diorama, you're not supposed to, at least that's the way I, I, show my, I tell my students, I will not move the, the, the model. I will just stand in front of the model and view it and evaluate that model. So it's not intended to be viewed all the ways, okay? Okay, this is, this is only a showing what you could do with, with two objects. You have a dinosaur, you have a car, so you start preparing with an idea. What you want to show, what you want to build. Forgive me. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's the same two models in different places, okay? Now, there are different kinds of dioramas, okay? You can make a qu any question at any moment if you want. Um, no, it, it doesn't bother me, okay? If I'm going too fast or you don't understand me, just raise your hand and I'll say it again. Okay, let's talk about the front structure diorama. The front structure diorama, as you can see, I don't have the building. It will be around here. If, if I would have to make the whole building, the whole structure, so I'm leaving the driveway, perhaps, parking lot. But I just wanted to show the first part of the McDonald's restaurant and two automobiles. And this model, um, this special model, you can see it inside. All you're gonna see is two people eating and a person attending the person that's buying. That's all, and that is a diorama. If you, uh, but if you want, you can put more space, add more space, more cars, more figures. It's still, it's still a diorama, okay? I would say a law, right, a law for diorama is that, that's my law, <laughs> it's not in any book. Um, you could appreciate my model, you could criti criticize my model, but you can't tell me that uh, something's left, because that's a work of art. It's not like a car, right? You open the hood, oh, he doesn't have the starter, he left the battery, well, that's wrong. But you can't tell me that I need a figure here, you can't tell me that I use a yellow base, that's my idea, it's my art. Win or lose, it's the art of the person that's doing it, okay? So that means we have to respect the diorama. That's one, oh my God. <laughs> I think I have my TV at home. <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> that's another view of the same model, okay? Okay. That's another kind of model that you could build. As you can see in this model, I have 
an opening, a garage. I have a small opening here. I have the figures outside. And still, it's a model with small space. I make models with small, small space because um, when you go in an airplane to fly eight hours, like I come here to, to um, Utah, so I can't take a big model because then they, they will send a model with the, with the um, baggage. So I make a model that could carry it, and they let me pass. Okay. Okay, we have a model here that's called two-wall interior diorama. As you remember, the McDonald's restaurant, I had the front side of the McDonald's. Now I'm, I'm, I made a diorama with the inside of a restaurant. I don't have no, no elevation or side elevation, but it's called two-wall, one, two. Two-wall diorama, okay? I have a piece of the street around here. You can see it. I don't have no windows, no, no outer walls, no doors. This is intended to, to make the person look inside and go inside the model without touching it. It's very important that no diorama can be touched. Okay, I have to see, if, if I want to show something important, so I have to leave it open so the viewer can see it. But it's not intended so nobody touch it, so. Okay, I have here rappers singing, <laughs> the other hummies, I think you see them. I have here a, a counter, tables, some guys outside a dog. I have a guy who has painted the, another man's car. Okay, and it's very important when you make a diorama, you have to make an eye-catching diorama. What's an eye-catching diorama? If you, if you um, get to have a viewer 10 seconds in your diorama, it's a good diorama. I don't know if this happens to you. Even with your, with your car model, you go to a great show, you put your car and the people just pass by. Oh, I saw the blue car. But would you like a person to just go back and see, let me see the blue car, right? And you go back. So you made an effort. The person stayed there 10 seconds. I say that if a viewer stands stay 10 seconds front of the, in front of the diorama, it's a perfect diorama, okay? And when I take a diorama to show it in competition, I'm watching to see. And if too many people pass it by, I think I, may, I made a bad job, okay? I'm not talking about the children. The children would always stand by and break them. <laughs> I'm talking about adults, okay? The children would always stand by. Okay, that's a uh, two-door diorama. To the same diorama with another view, a higher view. Okay. As you can see also, the way I angled the diorama for the picture, if I put another angle, what would you see? The back wall, that's not important. Okay. We have uh, another diorama called open section diorama. As you can see, this diorama, I didn't put no window, but I put a column, I put a uh, beam, Okay, letting know where the windows were supposed to be. Um, I, I know windows on the front part of the store also. No door, but the door opening is there. Okay, no roof, no structure. So you can just lean down and see the model inside. This is called open section view diorama. Okay, I have some people outside. And I, I always try to make different details in the diorama. Like the one I was just talking about. Right, I have different themes at the same time. I'm gonna say it again. I have some person talking outside, person coming out, the counter, you know, if, you see different things at the same time, okay? And it's very important to have a diorama or a figure. For me, a diorama without a figure, well, it, it doesn't help too much, okay? Because a car just put on a, on a, on a piece of uh, wood, it's not a diorama, it's in a base, right? Excuse me? Uh, the same model, okay, another view. But I can see, it, if I keep on moving the, the diorama, I lose what I really want. It's very important also when you make a diorama, you put the diorama on the table the way you want it to be. Okay, very important. When I go to a competition and exhibition and I don't have space, I call the person that had the diorama and tell them to please move it. So I could put mine, but I don't move nobody's diorama. Okay, the other, the other, another kind of diorama is open, open section view. No, the, the, the environmental, okay, environmental no limit view. That's the way I call it, okay? This, um, the, the way I'm calling the diorama is the way I call it, the way I, um, I learned how to make them. 
So this um, sometimes um, it's a little hard from Spanish to English, so forgive. It's an open environmental no limit diorama. Why it's no limit? Well, um, I don't have no back walls, no scenery. So that means if you look at the diorama, you can imagine what else like you could have over in back of the, the, the bridge. You could have an, a town, the sea, whatever you want. So I captured your view for a few seconds, and you can imagine what else is going to be around, OK? That's yours. <laughs> so another view from the same model. Okay. Now we have what is called, well, that's the same, it's, it's a model as the, same, um, as the one we just saw. It's a no limit diorama also, OK? No walls, no scenery in the back part of the, of the model. Okay. <laughs> Forgive me, Jeff Gordon, but <laughs> I'm no, I'm a Bill Elliott fan, so forgive me. Anybody around here? Okay, okay. So I, I build the car carefully, then I pass it over the stove, <laughs> okay, to burn it up. Okay. This is what is called a full structure diorama. It's then when I give the whole structure to the building. Okay. As you can see, this is called the uh, Sarah's Ice Cream Parlor. I have the two scale model figures, and I have a full structure, because th this building is small, but it can exist in, in, in any place, any town, okay? I have two persons in the windows, and I put some, some, some things in the windows so the person won't have to wait nothing inside. No, it's, it's not open, it's just uh, open, with no walls, nothing important out inside, okay? So that means that, um, it's called a full structure diorama. You have to be careful with full structure diorama because you're not know going to be watching the side. So what I do, I try to finish the side view, put the same sign, right? So it won't be too, too lonely, right? As you can see, I, I, the other side, I had a window. I have a window and the same sign again. That's, uh, it's not too, it ha had too much light in the camera, so it's another full structure diorama, okay? Most of my dioramas have my last name, Balbos, or, or something of McDonald's. <laughs> McDonald's parts of my show in Puerto Rico, so everywhere I go, I put something of McDonald's. Okay. Now, Another point very important in diorama is the use of the scale. Everybody knows what the scale? It's a ruler, okay? It's a ruler that is made, a, a proportional ruler is made to, me to measurement of a, of a distance, any kind of measurement, and reduce that measurement. For example, if you're going to um, look for the drawings of this building, so nobody will be able to carry the drawings. So what you do, you use a scale and you, and you bring down the measurements to a smaller size and you can work with the drawings, okay? So that means this building perhaps measures 200 feet long, but maybe I have a six inches scale, okay? So I'm gonna, I don't have too much papers. I didn't know there were so many people here today, so <laughs> I'll bring more later on. Can you help me make with this, please? Give one to each. But I'll pass by and I'll, I'll explain it. The front page is just an information. Oh. Huh? Oh, no, don't. The front page is an information, basic information on model building. Yeah. But let's go to the third page. I'll just show it here for those that don't have. So I just put in a normal house, okay, indicating measurements of the heights. For you to make a diorama, it's important to you to know. If you're going to make a building or a store, right, or a small hobby shop, you have to know the measurements of the doors, the windows, right, um, the trees, and everything. Because and then you make a diorama out of scale, it, and it's like seeing a drawing out of focus. Okay, if you have a, a, a figure this small and the car is this big, so it's out of scale. The same way, if, or if you use a matchbox or a hot wheel car 
and you have a 24-inch scale figure, so it's, it's not compatible, right? And we use this to evaluate the dioramas. Scaling is very important. So if you don't do no measurements, so just don't, um, don't invent the things. Buy books, magazines, ask a contractor, an engineer, an architect, or something, they'll give you the measurements, okay? You, I have a page of windows, no, no, no doors, excuse me, doors, that the, the height of them. It's very funny when you see a diorama in a figure, perhaps you see me right now, and the door is this high, right, in the diorama. So what you say? I have to bend down to go into the house? Or maybe it's too big, okay, or too wide. I see dioramas that are perfect made, real, real good detailing, but then they failure in the scale. And I better see a good scale diorama, even though you have fingerprints, perhaps a little bit of glue, something happened, but the scale is perfect. And that for me is very important. I evaluate the scale, mostly the finishing. Because finishing is called the art of diorama. And no not everyone has the art of diorama. Not everybody has the ability to do, it, to do it. But if you maintain a good scale, it's a good diorama. Okay? You have um, windows, doors. Now, there's a page here, very important. It has a ruler. We mostly build cars 124 scale, right? Perhaps small scale, but w let's talk about 124 scale this morning because we won't be able to talk about all the scales. Okay, you got a normal, a normal ruler. If you can't buy an architect scale, don't worry, don't be scared. Okay, it's, it's nothing of another world. It's a sm you could get a basic ruler, the ruler that has from 1 inch to 12 inches. No problem. What this means is that in 1 inch, you have 2 feet in scale. Okay? 124 scale, let me write it down so it's going to be better if you see it. Okay. We all built 124 scale, mostly, right? Scale models. It's the same thing as that half an inch of a ruler is one feet. It's the same thing at G scale in model train building. When you buy, when you go to a hobby shop and you, you, you see some figures or accessories in train hobbies, you have to ask for it for G scale. And, 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 and I've gone to hobby shops and, I, and if I tell them I need something in this scale and this one, they say they don't have. Because they specialize in trains, not in cars. So they will sell you G scale. It's the same scale, 124, and the same scale, half an inch. As I was saying, that means that half an inch is what? Half an inch is one foot in distance. So, if you're going to make a garage for a car, the space that you have to leave for a normal garage is eight feet wide, 18 long in the real life, right? So that means in scale, you have eight feet, how many inches? Four. You have eight inches long, how many um, feet? Nine. Any question? Did you got it? This is the secret of model building. If you get these points, you could build anything, even Star Wars. Okay? <laughs> I have some books and magazines of, of when he started building um, Star Wars. What's his name? I forgot his name. Lu George Lucas. And if you see them, there's a whole bunch of errors and mistakes. But as the camera passes by, you can't see them. That's the trick of the eye view. Okay? Remember what I said about the eye view, the person that's passing by? So what he does, he does a trick. He makes a model and passes the camera so fast, you, don't, you can't see the detail, but you get impressed with the model. That's very important, okay? There's other scales here that you can see in the ruler. Now, if half an inch is one foot, how much is a, how, what distance do we have in a quarter inch? Six inches. And how much do we have in eighth of an inch? Three inches. You got it. You're learning. That's great. <laughs> That's good. Okay. Um, if you get smaller, but you don't really have to, but in architectural model, you get smaller. You have one inch scale, so it's smaller than one eighth, it's one sixteen, and so on. Okay? Okay. 
First thing that you have to do for a diorama, as I said, you have an idea, okay? Have an idea in your mind. You make a list of what you need. You make a, if you're gonna make a garage, you have to get some company like Scale Equipment or other company, start making a list of what you want in the garage, okay? And you have to make a sketch of the building. After you make a sketch, you, you make a scale drawing. Sketch doesn't have scale, it's the idea. Then you make a scale drawing using the ruler to see what's happening. You know, if I have the good distance, it's too, or it's too high, it's too low. Then what I mostly use is foam board, matte board, and plastic. That's mostly what I use. So I draw on that material what I want, and then I cut it with an X-Acto knife. Okay? Always use a, a straight edge ruler to cut. Okay? Never cut it in the, in, the, in the first shot. You have to go many times until you feel that you cut the edge. Okay? Why the drawing is important? Because you will decide what side of the diorama you want the viewer to see, and you will decide what, uh, what, what kind of drawing will you make for the foam board and for the mat board or bars or whatever you use. Okay? Most windows are, are, are glued in the back side of the opening. Okay? You could buy many things um, to make a diorama, or you can make the door, make the windows. Okay? I understand that that, um, as I said before, for me, when I evaluate a diorama with my students, I'll tell you the way I, I do it. GSL doesn't do it that way. Don't get scared this morning, okay? I'm just telling you, if you have this idea, you'll work on it, okay? But I, I don't know how they do it, okay? But I'm not, I'm, I'm not into that. But um, I'm going to give you an idea of how it's, it's um, evaluated. Any questions? Any experience you had? Right, I was using before a uh, wood, plywood, but it's too heavy, because the plywood, um, uh, you know, it, it, it loses its strength, so you have to put um, wood around it, and then I have to carry a 10 pound model. So, and I always need someone to help me, so I use foam board. Now, wh when I need a height, because I don't want it too low, so and then I make a, like a, a railing around it, and then I cover with foam board. So it's, uh, it's, it's inside, it's, there's, there's nothing inside. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you didn't say anything about shadow boxes? You know, the shadow box where you, you, your board really is to look at one side and you do a night scene or whatever. Right. That's called um, three or four wall diorama, right? You have um, it's called a box diorama also. Okay, that's that's used a lot in for theaters. It's, it's very good because you could put um, some figures in the front and, and and you could put more things in the back. Okay, and you could put a, a scenery and everything. Sometimes they call it two box also, and they call it um, three wall diorama. Now for most scales, it's good, but for smaller scales, it's it's bad, because you can't see inside. You have to put some lighting. Uh, also, uh, Auto Week magazine several years ago had an uh, issue for dioramas. And it, was, it was pretty inspirational, but I had to crack up when they had screws on the wrist so it looked like they came off of a locomotive. <laughs> All right, right. Also, that's what's very important. When, when I see a diorama, the first thing I look is for scale. And for example, if you want to make a hand, um, a doorknob, and one twenty-four scale, you could use a pin with a little head that comes. Just paint it, just put it. Don't buy a. Uh, mostly you can find one inch scale. Have you seen the one inch scale houses? The buildings are this big. The, the, they're called dollhouse hobby. We can't use that in our scale. Well, I don't see. Does anybody have a, a page inside? It's called. Um, it's called evaluation. You have? Can I have it, please? Yeah, I left mine. <laughs> okay, I have this one. Thank you. Okay, um, this is the way we give the points to my students. Exactness or accurate? I give 55 points, this is the higher points. Exactness means if you're gonna make a garage, it can't be, if, if I'm looking at a garage, I can't see an ice cream parlor. Know what I mean? It's a garage, so you have to see all the things in the garage. That's called um, exactness inaccurate. Appearance, well, colors, um, accessories, no? The people will like it. 15 points on that one. 
Balance, what is balance? Well, I call balance in a diorama. When you, let, let, let's make a drawing of a top view, okay? This is a base. And I say, I have a structure here, okay? And I have um, two cars, like the one I showed you before, okay? Well, what did I do with that diorama? I cut it off around here. But if I have a model this long and nothing here, it's out of balance. Very important. So put a tree, put, you know, put a, a swim pool, put something. But don't leave it that way, okay? Sometimes I see a big board around 40 inches by 40 inches, and I see the building here and the car right here. Okay? It don't sense. You have to balance. If you don't have nothing, cut it off. Okay? Cleanness. As I said before, you know, fingerprints, glue, sometimes that happens. You have to, you have to um, think about that when you're building. I do that sometimes. You, you, probably you will never see a fingerprint in my building or my structure. Never. Because what I do, if I finish the building and I have a fingerprint, I fix it. Okay. I put something on the wall. That's it. A sign, <laughs> a tree, or, or a person just lying, laying down next to the wall. Something you will never notice. Okay. So the scale, five points. This is a total of 100 points, the scale. Why I leave, uh, this, is, uh, this is the less points in scale, because um, for more time that I speak about it, somebody always has a problem. I have a model that my friend Simon, he's from Puerto Rico, I have a, a model from a McDonald's, and the hamburger is as big as a pizza. <laughs> I made that model on six years ago. I didn't find a, um, a hamburger, so I left it there. And everywhere I go, everybody starts to come back. Oh, the, the hamburger is bigger than the pizza. I got you. You stay at my drive -on. That's what I wanted. You stayed there. <laughs> okay? I could take it out any time, but I've left it there. Yes? Um, you can go through, uh, you can go through uh, dollhouse miniature shops. And most of them are done in 112 scale. But there's also a, you know, quite, a, a, quite a lot of materials available in 124th scale, right. including windows, doors, um, and miniature food. Right. They have scale pizzas, hamburgers, you know, little <laughs> Coke things, cu cups of coffee, right. all in, uh, in uh, 24th scale. Right. And so those can become really handy to, to find objects like to put in your McDonald's and <laughs> yes. dioramas where there's food. So Thank you for that. Sure. Oh, well, when I built that, that model, it was like five, six years ago, I didn't find um, the company, but now I have more companies. Um, in Puerto Rico, we don't hardly find much of these things. We have to handmade. We have good hobbies, but not um, hobbies for dioramas. And dollhouses, it's a hobby. It's more seen in the United States than in Puerto Rico. One inch of scale. Now, that, now those stores are bringing half an inch now, because most people go there, I need this, I need that, and they're buying some stuff. Up. Yeah, there's yes. a lot of stuff available if you look around. There's right. uh, tons of it, but if, especially right. if you go to these dollhouse miniature stores. And, uh, you know, pretend you're buying stuff for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I know how to pretend. I, I go to a lot of toy stores, and some people see me buying toys and things. Sometimes I just buy a toy, and all I want is something inside that toy. Okay? For example, I made a model of McDonald's, so I bought a, a, a toy of McDonald's. All I wanted was the end. That's all I wanted. Because I couldn't um, make the same way I wanted, so I just bought, buy a toy. Um, there's lots of magazines. Uh, like um, miniatures, that's a good magazine of dollhouses. That's where I get the information. Um, model railroading is important. Yeah, I know some model builders that build cars don't want to know about trains, but believe me, you buy the magazine and you find lots of information for dioramas, especially for scenery, trees, bushes, um, so many things. I buy that magazine. I buy um, real mag uh, magazine of architecture. Like I, I also buy. Um, Popular mechanics, you know, magazines of cars also, because I have to see what I'm looking for in real life and how can I transport it in a scale. Okay? Any question about the scale evaluating? Yes? I've seen the model railroad dioramas where they use course perspective of different scales. Mm -hmm. Do you think you could get away with that with model uh, well, dioramas? Or? Something that I do. That um, sometimes I can find, for example, I can find the figure that I want, especially the uh, specific figure, and I don't find it in 124th, and I find it in 125th scale. It's almost the same scale. What I do is that I have a car, 
So I put the figure a little bit more farther, okay? Because that way, when your eyes passes by through the car, can't really see the height of the figure, okay? Because your eye view will disappear at that moment. But if you can't find it, as, as he says, sometimes in different scales, so you have to play with it. Some model very well trained, um, some model the model trains, um, they tended to be that way. It's called a perspective diorama. I didn't bring none because I don't build those. But they're, they're used mostly in museums. Have you seen museum scenes that you see one figure here and then you see a small one right next to it, but it's, it's trying to make you, make, uh, make you see that there's a distance? So then you play with different, and you can do it in a 124 scale. You can make a diorama and create a distance. So you buy another kind of scale and you make it. But when you can't find the same scale, you can um, do it that way. There are, I have some scales here that you could combine um, with other scales. I've done it, so it's, as I said, you can't put it next to the other one. Okay, I'm gonna read them, so perhaps for the person who doesn't have it. One eighth of inch scale, right? It's 196 in engineering. It's the same scale as HO in train hobbies, okay? HO. 3 sixteenths of an inch, it's 164. Mostly the Hot Wheels, Matchbox, you see them that scale. In model trains, it's letter S scale. And this is the, we can combine this scale. 148 could be combined with 143 and 150 scale. You see, it's almost the same scale, okay? But you can't put them together in a diagram. You have to separate it in one way. And 124 and 125 could be together. That's O scale. And HO, you could combine 196, 187. And using different scales in the right way, it's all right. You, know, you don't have no problem because in real life, we, we all don't measure the same height. Okay? We're skinny or we're too fat, right? So what you do, you move the figure and you could tell, well, that person is shorter than this other, but it's out of scale, but you can't notice, so you can't put it together. If you put it together, you will notice one problem. You know how you know when two figures are not the same and they're all out of scale even though you're working with them? Look for the, how you call this, um, so, um, pockets and the arms. That's where you know the difference. You put a different thing, you see the arm around here, and the pocket too high. So you separate them, okay? I always use that point of view. If you have two figures, you will see the arm of one figure longer than the other one in the pocket out of place. That's where you know that something is happening, okay? Any other questions? Okay. Now, I'm gonna do something here. I'm gonna well, simulate. Actually, you had a question over there and then I've oh. got one. Well? Oh, okay. Um, I'm wondering about research. If you wanna do a time period for a diorama, let's say it's 50 years ago or 30 years ago, how do you, what do you use for resources to find out signage, telephones, all of the things that place it in time, styles of clothing, haircuts, vehicles, whatever it is? Well, before I, before I use internet, okay? So I have to go to the library, um, university. Um, first of all, if, if you're looking for a diorama for that time, it's because you have an idea of what you want to do. So for example, you're going to make a garage of 1950s, so you have to get all the things in the encyclopedia or in the library, clothing. What I do is, for example, newspaper of that time, you can see the clothing of them, the way they, they dress, the cars or the streets, the lighting poles, everything, you can see it there. Then start, after you make the research, start looking for stores, hobbies that would have them. Don't have them, you have to make them. Question? Yes. Shep Payne, who has written a couple of books on dioramas, uh, specifies two basic concerns. Uh, one is that you should never put anything uh, on your diorama uh, in a parallel to the shape of the base. Uh, and I noticed that a lot of the dioramas you make are parallel to right. the base, and, right. and you've expressed the desire to, to limit the size of the base to limit the viewer's eye and, and then you position things. I, I was wondering what your take was on, on that particular quote rule. 
Okay. Uh, also, he talks about having a story in each diorama, having something that, that is easily understood as an event taking place, and perhaps even having uh, little jokes uh, within the vignette that are going on. And uh, Are those concerns that you have? Yes, I do. The difference between the way he does the diorama, if, if you check his diorama, they're not straight lines. They are like perspective. When you make a diorama in perspective, you could play with the base. Okay? I mostly have aligned it. If I have, one, if I have the, the structure, the same way I make the base. It's because I like it that way. It doesn't have to be like that. But he, he works a lot in perspective. And perspective, not everybody understands that. Okay? Um, perspective, you have to make a building higher, make it shorter in the back so you can see it. And I, 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 I've been to lots of shows of model scale building. And nobody has made, as I've seen, well, I'm, oh, I haven't gone all the while, but I see magazines and books, and nobody really makes a perspective diorama for a car show. It, but it, it's good. I would like to have one. I would like to do one one day. I know how to do them, but bring it. But I know that perhaps if I do it, maybe the judges, I'm not, I'm not speaking about the judges, maybe the judges just put it away and say, well, I would like to see better. Because sometimes it's, it's, you have to um, show the people that it's also a diorama. And if, and, and if you're nice, it's, um, and it transports you to a whole bunch of things, okay? Um, before I, I ask your question, and then the other question was um, about the, st the story, right? I mostly do the story before the sketch. What do I want to present? It's important because if, if you make an idea and a story, you will, you will give life to the diorama, okay? The only diorama that I respect a lot and doesn't have to give me no story is when you have an old car like in the desert, you know, weathering, it's all um, old, all bushy. That's a, that's a nice model. You don't have to have a story. It tells what it is. It's beautiful, okay? And that's the only model that I understand. It doesn't have a figure, right? You just pass it by, by Arizona or someplace. Hey, look, a car, take a picture. And when you take out the picture, you see a car lonely in the desert. It's okay. He said it. I don't have to. I, <laughs> that's all right. I just want to say something else of what he said. Okay. Let's go back to the perspective, the out of line base. Okay. The, the way I have to work with a sketch in that way that we were speaking, I have to work with two points of view. Okay. One of them is I use the important angle and two points of view. Okay. This is the most part, the most important part of my diorama. So if I want to make a structure, I just cut it down, okay? Make the streets, okay? Make the curb. This is an example, okay? I eliminate this over here. I eliminate the eye view. This is
this is, this is the way I do the sketch. I have a switcher in perspective right now, okay? So that means that I could have a person here standing, and this will be smaller, because maybe the street just goes around, okay? So this person will be smaller. This is bigger. You see what is perspective um, drawing and what is a perspective diorama? So if I have a car, maybe I have a car over here, and I could have one smaller in the back part, okay? That means that this door will measure eight feet. This window will be smaller, and this door has to be smaller. I buy smaller, okay? So then I broke the base. That's not the way I do my models, see? I mostly work with my models in a square or rectangle base. And I start with a structure in the same way or this way. I work this way. I, I work um, vertically or sideways. That's the way I work mine. As I said, this is a great perspective. I like them. I, I've done several, but ne I've never competed with them because I'm afraid. <laughs> you know, I'm afraid when they see it, they will start saying, this is not scale, this is not scale, this is not, put in the box. <laughs> so sometimes you have to educate the people. And right, right now in the United States and all around the world, you know that the category of diagram is open. But perhaps in the future, we can have different th um, themes inside diorama, and then this, this can appear, see? Side, uh, side diorama, open diorama, closed diorama, full structure. So when you see a diorama, a diorama with the ones I've seen already, I'm not speaking about nobody, take it easy, but you'll see right now different kind of diorama. Right now, you just go to the room and you'll see them. But we're down one category, diorama, okay? Perhaps in the future we can do that, and then we will divide and when they do that, I'll bring this one. <laughs> okay, another question. Uh, you stress, okay. okay, thanks. That way I don't have to yell then. Um, you stress clean, cleanliness. Um, it's a, I'm making more of a comment than a question. Um, to me, I think a, a scene needs to be dirty because you know when you go outside, the gutters are dirty, there's some trash here and there. You, you personally, um, would you, deduct for such no. detail? No, I'm going to explain. I thank you to ask, to ask, make the question. I didn't mean to be cleanness of the diorama of the scene. It's cleanness of the way I work with it. What can be dirty? Fingerprints, as I said. You know, that's cleanness. That's what I'm saying. When you glue two walls together, I can't see the glue drip, drip, dripping down. If I cut a, a window opening, so I can't see the window, I can't see the window square, right? And perhaps the person cut off the wall, and I see if I can see through it. That's what I mean, cleanliness. Now, life in a diorama is your, is your idea. I can, make a, I can make a clean street as or make a, a real life street with garbage, you know, um, a door pewing, so many things you can do, right? <laughs> but that's in your hands. But what I, what I meant about cleanliness, I meant about that. Your working ability in the model. That's what I mean. Not, not um, that's called like um, let me see the word um, like weathering. Okay, you give weathering to a figure. If, if, if you have a figure working in the street, right, a working man in, in the street, so you can't have clean clothes. You have to dirty the clothes. That, that's different. Okay, another question or an idea. Right. Okay. So they're smaller. But on his second story buildings, they're even smaller than that. And the third story of the building, they're even smaller than that. So when you're walking down the street at Disneyland, you look up at the building, it's a three story building. But if you notice it, it's really only about two stories high. Right. And they've done four perspectives. And it is done so subtly that you really can't tell. And it's so cool to you know, just go through the Disneyland. What I think that they use. Right. To create a scene. And you can do the same thing in miniature. So, like in a lot of model railroaders, they'll build a, an antique a little barber shop that's from the 1890s or something like that. And if you measure with the scale ruler, you're going to find out that the barber shop's only six feet.
I've been to the Disney World, but there's a park, I don't remember the name right now. Um, it's uh, like a New York City town, there's the streets. You remember that? And, you, and you, you're going by the street and you see the Empire State Building at the, at the, at the park, but you never get there. <laughs> Have you seen that? You never get to the Empire State Building. And you walk and you walk, I'm getting, you never get there. You never get there, that's special effects. And that building perhaps measures only nine or 10 feet. But when you're on the first corner of the street, it looks like the real Empire State Building. But you keep on walking, you see it the same height. In a real building, while you're getting closer, you see the building higher. And when you get to it, you go like that, right? Because it's <laughs> oversized. I get to the, so I kept on walking, because I was checking the scales. And the street stopped, and I look over, the same building, and I can't get to it. <laughs> That's special effects. Now, Las Vegas on the strip, uh, you see a lot You see something that you can't see it. OK. Any qu another question? Yes. It's not complete. So a viewer goes like that, he just turns around again. Because I'm, I'm not giving him um, importance to the side view. So he just goes back again, go like this, nothing. Or perhaps he say, Balbosa left something in the model, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he, then what, what he does, he, and then he stands. So that's forcing the viewer to stay there. If I make the building, and, and, and for example, that stretch, and I make the drive through, he will st go like this and stay at the drive through. And then what I wanted to be a front, has lost its meaning. So you can force, not 100%, but you can force at least 85% of the view. It, it depends on what you do. I can't hear. About forcing the perspective, if you put a nameplate on your diorama base, you can sometimes indicate to people what you want to be the front because they'll automatically right. say, oh, that's the front because that's where the nameplate is. Right. And it doesn't have to be on the longest side. That's, that's, that's one point. Also, I've, I've seen dioramas with the nameplate at the side and forcing me to go on the side. That happens also, uh, what he's saying. There's, there's another part, and again, I think the three-dimensional painting is probably a good analogy because what happens in a What happens in a, in a painting, you know, one of the things that you are taught in art school, for example, is to give the viewer a path through the painting so that you're directing their eye to what you want. You can do the same thing by placing the elements in the diorama so that as they move, even subconsciously, they look at it and go, oh, I get a better view from here. Right. So again, as you're saying, you can control 80% right. of that, but you have to think about it beforehand rather than just putting stuff around I know you're right. that's random. Right. That's why I said that you have, a, you have to have an idea. And I, for example, what I do, like I said before, I make a basic model and I play with it. Sometimes I ask my wife to look at it. You know, she doesn't make the diorama, so that's the person that I want to know what she's, what she's watching or seeing in my diorama. I don't, get a, uh, I don't ask a person that knows about the diorama. I ask my wife, I ask my friends, my son, and my son said, ooh, that looks ugly. What is that? <laughs> Come later, I'll fix it up, and I'll call you again. So, he's, so that means that he's seeing something that I can't see sometimes. And, and I imagine that happens with the people that, you people that um, build cars, right? Only cars. Time passes, year passes, and you get a, a level that something you don't, don't see it. Because you're in a level that you, you, you have an idea, but you left something, OK? So um, for example, Simon Snows, I, have a, I had a model that had a, a car, and I forgot the headlights. I forgot the headlights. I won a competition. I forgot the headlights. And nobody at home told me I didn't have no headlights. I told my wife, check it out, nobody saw nothing. So I had the diorama in the competition, and that's where I saw that I, had, I didn't have the headlights. <laughs> oh my god. I had the car glue, you know, I just couldn't. If it was glue, I just <laughs> moved the car. But I couldn't, it was glued on, and it was already. So believe me, I won first place. But I won the first place, if they would have evaluated well the car. So that's what I mean, detail, that sometimes, uh, I was in a rush, and so I forgot the headlights. No? But um, for that reason, I would, me, I wouldn't give him, I wouldn't let him to, to, to win. See? That means that the judges or the person that were uh, evaluating didn't see that didn't have no headlights. Okay? Well, that's because the diorama was telling you different Oh, words. that's a good point. I didn't know that. I'm happy now. <laughs> that means that the diorama had something else. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> So I, I won the first place. <laughs> um, and any questions, any ideas or?
um, something that happened to you before making dioramas. Dioramas is for life. I don't know at all. There's not one book in the world that has all. Every, uh, every author is his idea. For example, if I were to do a book, right? So I will talk about the way I do it, but not the way the other person does it. But you can learn from something from me and from others. That's what I do with others. I buy books of other diorama builders, and I learn techniques, things that I don't know. I learn it. I use it if it doesn't work for me, so I don't use it again. Okay? So that's why I said before, when I was starting the seminar, that that's my law. Respect the diorama. I like critics. I like people to criticize. I, I, I don't feel bad. That, so if, if you see my model, doing the, say whatever you want. Give me ideas. Uh, so I'm not going to put it away because I will fly. I'm going to leave it there. <laughs> but um, what I'm saying is that um, it's important to be criticized. You have to learn to be criticized. I like to be criticized. But the criticize that I don't accept is when the people tell you that it wasn't to, why didn't I move the model to another view? Why? Because that was not my idea. So I have to respect it. Maybe he has, maybe he's saying the truth. Maybe you see my mother and you will say, well, but also should have put it this way. But again, that's my, t it's like, a, like when you make a painting, you sign it. Where was Picasso when he was painting? I don't know what he was thinking about. Right? But you look at Picasso and you say, wow, $3,000 of painting? My little kid could do it. Well, you say that now, but when he was painting, that was his idea, and that was, now anybody can do it. That, that, that's why he, it's important Picasso, because what he paints now, in that time, anybody could do it now, but when he was alive, nobody had the idea to do it. So the same thing, when you make a diorama, it's your idea, I respect it, I could help you, telling you some things, but I will never tell you that you have it wrong. It's your idea, I have to respect that. Okay? Um, any other questions? I brought something here to do it fast. Um, I'll do it in a moment here. It's not going to be perfect, okay? But just letting you know, and we finish. What time is it? If I, I'm over time, or? Okay, I've already finished. Okay, when well you have an idea, you draw it. So I'm gonna build here a two, a two wall interior basic diorama. What I did, I have the base foam board, okay? I cut it, this is my idea, small one. I have the back wall, right? I made the door open, the windows open. And I have a side wall, okay? Of course, there's, there's many um, building material, simulated building material, very important to have them. But I'm gonna do it very fast, don't, don't do it this fast, because <laughs> you're gonna see it beautiful from where you are, don't click, don't get, because you're gonna see many mistakes. But can we so, all get no, no, you can stay there, you can stay there. Believe me, it's very nice, it's looking, it's looking well. Well, I, I use a lot white glue. This is the base. I have a constructed material simulating concrete, right? I just put it there. That's once I have the idea, so. This is a basic, I would say this is a basic diorama. I like white glue because you could play with the paper. You can just take it out again. Okay, I have the floor, okay. Now I'm gonna work on, work on the walls, okay. I have simulated door. It's a piece of paper. That's the fun of it, nobody can touch the doors. <laughs> you evaluate the diorama, what you see, you can't touch it. Take a word on this. Let me get my glasses. <laughs> okay, I got it. I put some glue around the door opening. Of course, you could buy windows. Um, uh, the diorama with, with, build, with um, scale window looks better, well, obviously. I'm just making here um, very fast with paper windows, but you could buy them in the hobby shop, it looks gonna look better. I have here the door, okay. I have a small window. I 
want to put some architecture of paper on the, the walls, bricks, okay? I'm practicing because I'm planning to make a model of one of these days that I could uh, take a plane and just put in a small box and then go, go someplace or try to just build in the hotel, but it's not so easy. Okay. Wall finishes. The foam board really dries fast with white glue, okay? Now, I put some glue on the, f on the base of the, the wall. Put glue on the other base. Be Always clean your fingers, <laughs> or fingerprints. Okay. You're filming this? Yeah. Oh, my. <laughs> okay, yes. I'm going to just hold it here a moment. It will glow in fast, but okay. Put any car, snap tight. Okay. I always have a figure. <laughs> I have that problem. That's my problem. Okay. I got the diorama. That's it. Right? Accessories. You could just buy them. Okay? <laughs> now, the idea, it could be in any scale. The same diorama in a smaller scale. <laughs> this is fun. I could, could carry a ten in my pocket and go anywhere in the world, right? The same model in, in a smaller scale. A two-wall two interior diorama. That's all for today.